Good morning. So good to have you out this morning, and we're starting a new series called Living the Blessed Life, and we're going to be keying on one verse for the next couple of weeks, and that is when Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Would you say that with me? It is more blessed to give than receive. There's a blessing in receiving. He's not denying that. I've received so much over my lifetime. I am so unworthy of so many things that people have done for us and given to us. Uh, but uh, it is a blessing to receive. No question about it. But there's a greater blessing than receiving. And that is giving. And so we're going to be looking at that whole subject matter of giving uh, as uh, through the scriptures, we're going to be taking a journey. And today we're going to be looking at David, who was one of the great givers of all time. Let's pray. Father, you are a giver. You give and you give and you give and you give. In fact, you gave the greatest gift of all, and that was Jesus to us. You gave him up so that he could die for us and that we could have eternal life. What a, ma on, on, what, what, what a gift, what a magnificent gift, what a, what a wonder that is to think about that. You, the Father, gave your own Son up in order that we would have life, in order that we would be transformed, in order that we would be more like Jesus, who was the greatest giver of all. I pray there would be a spirit of generosity, a spirit of giving, that would capture our hearts. And we uh, just dedicate this series to you. Thank you for these words that Jesus left with us. Amazing words. It is more blessed to give than to receive. There's such blessed life that we can all have as we learn to give. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering. I thank you for these friends of mine. I pray, oh God that there would be a blessing for them today, that their hearts, that our hearts would be open and our minds would be open to the beauty and the wonder of being a generous person. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. 35 years ago, my wife and I were sitting uh, in a school uh, at church, in a small church uh, called Christ Church in Long Grove, Illinois. And that church is very special to us because it was there that Christ, uh, God called us into ministry. And it was also there that we learned to give. We had a pastor, Pastor Bill Calvin, uh, was an awesome pastor in this small church, and we just loved going there. And uh, he would often talk about giving and money and faith and trust and uh, so we uh, we were trained well and I bless Pastor Bill to this day because he got Kitty and I on this track of giving and uh, it's been a wonderful journey for us uh, we have given uh, as God has given us uh, there are times though it's been tough to give there's been times when it's been difficult uh, there's times when I've wondered about it, and I'm thinking, Lord, are you sure this is your plan? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> because it's, uh, it, we're, we're doing this. We're, we're in process, and we want to do this. But are you sure, God, that this is what, because look at Joe over here. He doesn't even live for Jesus. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't serve, and he, he's so much better off than we we are maybe maybe this isn't your plan maybe you maybe i'm not i'm not i'm not reading this right and so it's been that kind of journey for us but when those doubts come into my mind and they do uh i need to go back to the word of god and so we're going to go back to the word of god and we're going to look at some principles of giving and what uh, that means and and, and, and you may be here, you may be a young couple. I hope I can reach you like Pastor Bill reached me 35 years ago. Changed our lives. Changed our lives. 
And uh, maybe you're young and, and you are just getting started. And I, I hope that through this series, you'll see the beauty and the wonder. Maybe you're here and you're, you're a tipper. You tip God. We, were at, we went out to eat last uh, night, Kitty and I, and gave a tip. And some of you are just tippers to God. And, and I would encourage you to be givers to God. To give him the very best of your life, of your talent, of your time. Uh, of your money, um, or maybe you're here and, and you're, a, you're a sacrificial giver and you're wondering about it, you're thinking, you know what, if I added up all the money I've given, woo, baby, whoa, maybe, maybe that isn't the way to go. Maybe you're here and you just need encouragement and you're a sacrificial giver, I'm here to encourage you. We're brothers together in this and sisters. And so we want to look at uh, this whole subject matter of giving. You know, money is a very prominent theme in the Gospels. Jesus spoke more about money than any other subject matter. Because money represents our lives. It's our very essence of who we are. And so we tend to uh, personalize it. It's mine. It's ours. Uh, sort of like when our kids were young always amazed me. I'd give them something, and then it was mine. And it's not my brother's. Ben's trying to steal it from me, Dad. And that's the way we are. It's like we've got marbles in our hands, our little fists wrap around them, and we say, this is mine. And we're missing a blessing. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's what he said. Do you believe that? That's a weak amen. I'm in trouble in this series. No one wants to hear this. I knew it. If I talk about money, I'm in big trouble. But we're going to do it because I believe this is so important in your life. Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Do I hear an amen? amen. Well, that's better. Now you're with the program. It is more blessed to give than to receive. We're going to look at David's life, uh, his giving patterns. And if anyone can match David's uh, patterns, uh, God bless you. He was an amazing giver. First Chronicles 29. And um, please get your Bibles out because there's a lot of text. And I've been really wrestling what to do with all of this. It's so good. Grab a Bible in your pew. Get to your index. Do not be embarrassed. I never was an Awana, so to this day I don't know where all these books are. Where are these books? It's like I'm the pastor and I'm looking around here. Where is, uh, where is Philemon? Where is that? It just escapes. And uh, I didn't have that training like our kids. Anyone remember the song of books? Don't you? Isn't there a little song or something? Anyway, we don't need to sing it right now, but... But if you open your Bible in the very middle, you should go to Psalms, and 1 Chronicles is to the left of Psalms. I got that right? Yeah. Okay. If you go to Psalm, open up your right, go to the left, and uh, you'll hit 1 Chronicles 29. David, I just love David. He's a man of great passion, a man of great heights and great sin, and Great problems, and great situations, and leader, and messed things up, and came back to God, and he was just all over the map. Uh, and uh, but the one thing he did right was give. He was a giver, you know, and that's one of the things that I thought to myself: I may mess up a lot of things, but the one thing I can do, I can give. I can do that. That can happen because that's a choice. But I may be a little bit off on this, but I'm not going to be off on my giving. And so um, he was like that, and he built a cedar palace for him. And uh, these palaces were anything like the Romans had when we were in Israel. So impressed with King Herod, and all the palaces he built were magnificent, beautiful, the remnants that were there. And uh, David probably built quite a palace for him, and there was the Ark of the Covenant, which is a representative of the manifest presence of 
God, sort of where God was in a tent. So you're living in a palace and God's living in a tent. There's something wrong with that picture, right? That's a big problem. And he thought, you know what? I'm going to build a temple for my God. And he goes to God and says, I'd like to build a temple for you. God says, I can't because you shed too much blood. You've, you're, you're a warrior, and I want a man of peace to build my temple because peace is to be in that temple. Shalom, Solomon, right? And that's what his son was. So he chose his son. He says, no, Solomon, which means peace, he is going to build the temple because this is going to be a place of great peace between God and us and between people. And so David says, well, then I'm going to make all the preparations. And I'm going to have a huge fundraiser, if you want to call it that, or giving time for the building of this temple. So he gathers all the people in Jerusalem. All the leaders are there. And David's there. And he addressed this whole assembly in chapter 29, verse 1. Then King David, the king, the ruler of Jerusalem and Israel, expanded the borders. He's an amazing military genius, leader, amazing man. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, peace, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because of the nature of this temple and how large it was. It was a huge undertaking. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I provide for this holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ophir, which is the best gold in the area, 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the building, for the gold work and the silver work and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now... Who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? He has a challenge. He tells them what, he, there you go. Personally, he's just giving, he's emptying out the, his personal uh, accounts. He's just emptying it all out. He's going to give everything. They say this is worth billions of dollars. Billions. He was a billionaire, David was. He was a rich man. And he opened the treasure up and said, I'm giving it all. And he says, you know what? I'm going to lead. I'm going to lead in this. I'm going to give because I believe God is worthy of everything I have. Now, we're gonna, he's going to tell us why he did this. But he says to the people, who is willing to concentrate themselves? Lord? He's, he's looking for their hearts. He's looking for their being. He's looking for them as a person. He's saying, who will dedicate them, devote themselves to God, their lives, their kids, their family, their future, all that they are, including their own uh, uh, financial uh, finances. Who, who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? Who will do this? So David's up there just being so transparent about his great love for God. It says, is anyone going to follow? Well, what happened? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave what? Willingly. Because God had their heart. You get your heart right, and your will is going to follow. 
And they gave toward the work on the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Any who had precious stones gave them to the treasure of the temple of the Lord in the custody of Jehael, the Ger Gershonite. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely, and what? Wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. What a worship meeting. How would you like to be an usher? Collecting the offering on that day. Tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds of tons of gold and silver. Wouldn't that be a great day, Mark, my treasure, our treasure? Would that be an awesome day? Soon to come. Soon to come. <laughs> That's amazing. They had to get a dump truck. I mean, we're talking tons of gold and silver. And they did it joyfully. And everyone rejoiced. And everyone was generous. And God had their hearts, and there was just a spirit of revival that touched every part of their lives. I heard the old story of the old, we always pick on the Baptist, the Baptist preacher down in south someplace, and he was baptizing a man, and the man took out, and when he got baptized, this man took out his wallet and held it above the water before he was baptized, as he was baptized, because he didn't want to baptize his wallet. He didn't want to baptize his money. He wanted to give that to God. But they did this willingly. Now, David goes into a praise to God. Now, if you had just emptied out your savings, your retirement, your house, let's say you, I, I don't think David did that. I mean, he had probably all kinds of money in other places. But basically, gave, gave, you know, just basically gave about everything you got, would you be happy or sad? Would you be praising God or would you be mad at God? Would you be, what, what would you feel like? Now David was a worshiper above all else. I love the Psalms, I love his prayers. I love how he worshiped God and how we worship God in these songs. And wasn't that awesome today? Just worship him. Praise our God. And so, verse 10 says, David praised the Lord. He's praising God. He's, he's delivered all this gold to God in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, praise God. By the way, David's in his last year here. He's about 70 years old. And he's going to die very soon. This is his last prayer. This is his last psalms recorded. Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness. Our God is great. And the power, our God is all powerful. And the glory, our God is all glorious. And the majesty, our God is the king of kings and the majestic one. And the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. David is telling you why he gave. It was God's anyway. It's his. He owns everything in heaven, which is the universe. I feel so inadequate when I get to these scripture verses that talk about in the heavens and universe. And I wish I knew more. I wish I was more of a science guy, and I'm not. But if you think about all the galaxies all that they're discovering, the black holes and all this and all that, that's God's. He owns it. He owns the moon. He owns the sun. 
He owns it all. And he owns everything on the earth. This little speck of dust that's in our universe. This earth, it's God's. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. And so God, that's where we start with giving. You've got to get your head around this, your mind around this. You've got to get it. God owns everything. Everything you have, it's his. It's all his. It's all his. It's not yours. It's his. You hang on to it like for dear life, like it's just my, like my young boys, my young sons used to do with their marbles. It's mine. It's mine. Not yours, Matt. Dad owns everything you have. <laughs> I own your clothes. I own your shoes. I own this house. I own the car that takes you there. I own everything. But my sons this day don't get it. No. <laughs> you own everything. But we take it as if it's mine. God owns it all. And then he goes on, and he, some of you might be saying, well, I, 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 you know, I did it the old-fashioned way. I, I, I worked. I labored. I got my blood in this thing. It's through my skills, through my abilities, through my, uh, uh, through my ability to make money and to work and to expand and that's why I got all this. It's not God's, it's mine. What are you talking about, preacher? It ain't nothing to do with God. Some of you think that. I'm the one who gets up. God doesn't get up in the morning and go to work. I go to work. I'm the one who has to do this and that and report to this crazy boss I got. And I'm the one who's got to endure all this. I'm the one who manages it. I'm the one who invests it. It's mine. Well, David could have said the same thing. How do you think he got all his gold? You know how he got his gold? He got on his horse, led an army, and they conquered people. He put his life on the line. All the time, he's putting his life on the line. And he went in, and he took their gold and became his. And David could have said, I'm, I, I earned this. No one else did this. I led the armies. But look at what he says, verse 12. Wealth and honor come from you. Do I have an amen on that? Do you really believe that? You sure? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's all about you. Maybe that's the truth. It came through my ability. That's not what David said. Wealth and honor, even honor. Some of you are very honored people. And I'm honored you're here. But your honor did not come from anything you did. It comes from God. And he goes on and says, you are the ruler of all things. I'm not the king, you're the king. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. There you go. Those of you who believe that you made your self-made person and you did this on your own, David would say to you, you didn't. God gave you the strength to do it. He could have taken that away from you. You could have been born in the backwoods of China in a little village and you would have been born in poverty and you would die in poverty. That's what could have happened. God didn't do that. He put you right here, right where you're at, in the greatest country in the world, all right? Awesome country, opportunities that are unlimited, wonderful place, freedom, to make money, invest it. 
He put you here at this time. And then he gave you the help because God can turn that around just like that. So quickly, things can turn. God has you where you are right now because of his loving kindness shown to you. And he can change that as he wants. And maybe that's what's going on with all these hurricanes. Maybe God's trying to speak to us. And the self-sufficiency can be taken down in a moment. All these businesses, it's awful. Pray for them. Houston, Florida at this very moment. It can change awfully quick, can't it? If it hasn't for me today, how about you? We're here. We have an opportunity to give. And you need to take that opportunity while you have it, while you have your strength, and you have your health, and you have your ability. And then verse 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Who are you? Who are you? Who am I that I can give a dollar? I am just an average person. Listen, they were shocked that I ever went to college out of high school. I was below average. Still am. I was... <laughs> it will fix that. But who are, I, I know where I came from. Do you know where you've come from? I know where I've come from. I will never forget it. Never. My, my ability to go to college and seminary has nothing to do with me. Sorry. That is God giving me strength and abilities that were far beyond me. And then to be a pastor, how, how, how could that ever happen? Why, why me? Why should we be able to live our lives as generously as this? Everything. David wants you to get this. Everything. Mark that. Circle that. Everything comes from you. Amen? Amen. Now we're getting there. It's about time to go, so you're finally getting it and you can go. <laughs> Everything. This is David, the greatest leader in the Old Testament besides Moses. Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. David's saying, this is not a big deal for me to empty billions of dollars into your lap, oh God, because you gave it to me anyway and you gave me the strength for it. We are aliens and strangers in your sight as were our forefathers. And he's saying, we don't come from a good stock we don't come from a rich heritage. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Oh, Lord our God, as for all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your name, it comes where? From your hand. And all of it belongs to you. Do you think he's trying to drive a point home here? It all comes from him. He's said this three or four times. And then he said this, verse 17, we'll quit. I know, my God, that you test the heart. Money's a test, folks. It's your greatest test. Finances are a test to see how you'll handle it. All these things I've given, uh, he says, and please uh, test the heart and are pleased with integrity, wholeness, singleness of purpose. All these things have I given, how? Willingly and with an honest intent, with pure motives. 
And so, he, you know, David is the ultimate giver besides God. He's given with willingly. He gives with a pure heart. He's not trying to manipulate God. You know, sometimes I try to make deals. Anyone try to make deals with God? How's that going for you? I have tried to make deals with God. You know what? God doesn't make deals. Lord, I'm going to give you all this, but I want this. That is not a godly person. That's not godly giving, I should say. That is not godly giving. You give freely, willingly, with your whole heart, and you praise the name of God every time you give. You thank him. You give that you're able even to give. You're even able to give. Well, what happened? Verse 26. David, son of Jesse, was king over all Israel. He ruled over Israel 40 years, seven in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. He died at a good old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. He died. He never saw one brick in that temple. He never saw a thing. He didn't see anything. Never happened, but he gave. Why would he give all of this if he wasn't going to enjoy the temple? It's because he's given to God and not a project. He's given to the God he loves. He's given to the greatness of God, the goodness of God, the awesomeness of God. And if we could raise our vision to include God in our giving. You know, when you put that offering in, and I don't, I mean, I hate to admit it, but we, we do it online. And, um, you know, it just sort of happens. And I sort of miss, you know, giving thanks and then putting it in. But if you could raise your vision, have a greater vision of your giving, that you're giving to Jesus and his work, and you're giving to the future. And your giving isn't, I give this, I get this back. It's, no, I give this to God, and then he does with what he wants with it. And he gives us the wisdom to know how to handle it. My son called me. You know, I love it when my son calls me now that they're gone. I just, my son calls me. I don't care where I'm at. Yeah, what's going on? I love my boys. And uh, he said, uh, my youngest son said, Dad, let's talk about money. I said, that's a good thing. I said, I got it all and you have nothing. <laughs> Dad, you and Mom did, how'd you guys do it? What'd you do? Well, I had not a clue, because my wife does all of that, <laughs> how it all happens. But it happens. It's like a little business, right? Don't, our families are just little businesses, really. Got a little business. I said, but I'll say this one thing to you, Luke. You need to give to God. I said, you need to find a church, and you need to give to that church. That's what, that I know works. I don't know anything else about it. But Luke, give to God. Amen? Amen. May that be passed on to generations. The giving to God's work. You know, there's never a good time to start giving. When you're young, you say, oh boy, I gotta pay for college, I got all these loans, I got married, I got this, I got a house, I wanna save my house. It's not a good time to give. And then you reach middle age and you say, 
oh boy, my kids actually want to go to school. Now I got to pay for all that. And I got to do this and I got to remodel my home. It's looking bad and this and that. It's not a good time to give. And then you get into your latter years, you say, boy, am I in trouble. I don't have enough retirement. I can't give now, man. I mean, there's no way. I got retirement looking at me. And you know what? Someday you're going to be like David, and you're going to die. And the opportunity to give is going to be over. The window is very small in giving. And you want to start now. You want to start today. You want to start next week as you come to church and as you see the offering plate, come by to give. Not because I'm manipulating or anything like that, because it is more blessed to give than to receive, right? It's more blessed to give than to receive. And there is never, you're never going to find that perfect sweet spot. You're all looking for it. It ain't there. <laughs> when everything lines up. No, no debt, no this, no that, no that. Okay, now I can give. It's never going to be there. You'll never have that. You have to do it by faith. Trusting God. It is a test. Money is one of the biggest tests we have. Do I trust God or not? Will he provide for me or not? Will he take care of my family? Will he take care of others? Will he, will he, is, is this book true? You've got to test it. Next week, we're going to talk a little more. I hope you come back. <laughs> we're going to talk a little more. We're going to explore this whole area of test. But it's really a test of God. So, get ready. Be praying for you. And again, our key verse is, let's say it together, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Boy, that's weak. I can't let you out with that. <laughs> let's stand together and let's say it together. Now, now I might help you a little bit. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Those words are by Jesus himself. Lord, I pray that we would find this, live this blessed life, this life of faith. Thank you for calling Kitty and I so long ago to this life. And Lord, uh, I just want this for others. I want to see them blessed. I want to see them on this journey and venture of faith. Trusting you, wondering how you're going to do this. Lord, I pray there would just be a real spirit of generosity. There would be happiness amongst us. Because we're giving to you and your glory. Thank you for this time together in Christ's name. Oh, and Lord, thank you for this uh, Jay and uh, Leno. Uh, just thank you for them. 70 years, Lord. It's awesome. Awesome. Thank you for the food we're going to take together. We bless your name in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you have any spiritual needs, feel free to come forward. We'll pray over that and uh, just bless, bless you.